So we have the other realm, which is our soul. And, um, you know, and for me, it's the, the other realm is also um, other beings, my, my deceased loved ones. And I do feel guided all the time. I feel I'm communicated. They're communicating with me and guiding me all the time. And they're trying to communicate. And when I say they, I'm talking about either our higher self, our soul, our uh, guides, our deceased loved ones. They try to communicate and guide us all the time, but we have to be open to it. Mm -hmm. So that's one reality. Then here in the physical, I've, I feel that we have almost become like two worlds. There is the world that is living in fear, and then there is the world that can see through the fear. Those are the two worlds that are here. Mm. So I choose that like heaven and hell. Could you call that heaven and hell? <laughs> yes, you, you, you pretty much could. So heaven and hell exist right here on earth. It's not in the afterlife. It's right here on earth. Um, and the afterlife is, I just call it pure love, pure consciousness, but heaven and hell is right here. And hence the title of one of my books is what if it, what if this was heaven? Mm. In other words, you can choose to live in heaven right here so heaven is seeing through the fear hell is living in the fear the people that live in the fear they live in the fear because there is a fear of things like a fear of scarcity they live in a in a world of scarcity a world of competition there isn't enough to go around so i have to get ahead of everybody else um, they live in a world of um, where we are victims we're victims of our reality victims of illness um, the thing is, even illness, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens because of the seeds you sow and you can reverse it. So, but we're not taught all that. The, the way that the medical model is designed, it's designed to make us feel that we are victims of our illness and we're helpless to them. Mm. So, um, so COVID really, really, um, really pounded that, that, um, yeah. that in us a lot. So, um, and edu the education system as well, you know, it's about, it's about um, getting ahead of everyone else in your class. So when you see through the fear, you realize that there is more than enough to go around, but you just have to be able to see through the fear to, to be able to access it. Mm. Um, when you see through the fear, you realize that collaboration works better than competition. It gets all of us ahead faster. But unfortunately, the fear is so entrenched in some people that the more you have people that see through the fear, the more fearful the fear-based people become. So the more what? they push their fear-based agenda and hold on to it tighter. And that's what I see happening in the world today. But I choose to align myself with the people who see through the fear. Yeah, yeah. it's. It's um, my own experiences have shown me how things aren't just separate. They're part of the same whole. So it's kind of like almost like a teeter totter where it's like we're all part of the same whole. And the more people, you know, like have, you know, are elevating and going, oh, this is, you know, the see, I see through the fear, it sinks the other side. And it's sort of like, you know, it's a could be a t teeter totter. It could be just um, a expanding bubble of polarity that's really actually con con continuous and 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 connected um yes but it does feel like there's just this sort of expanding and contracting of emotions and experiences and there's one on each side because it we live in a time where you could say like oh my there's so many perspectives that you could have that are like oh everything is so bad there's so much corruption there's so much this but then you can also look on the other side and go like we can have this conversation and people understand like uh, we can, there is so many more people that are seeing through things. We're seeing the truth, which is always going to set you more free. And so yes. there's a lot of actually like extremely progressive and enlightening and wonderful things happening, but there's also the other side of it. Um, I wonder uh, like, as we're talking about sort of determinism and free will and soul contracts what about prayer and what about the power of it and whether or not we can alter timelines or futures based on that? 
Yes, absolutely. So it's both prayer and meditation. Mm -hmm. And group prayer and meditation is very powerful to me. Mm -hmm. So I tend to organize a lot of group meditation. Mm -hmm. I do that to uplift the planet. To, so it starts with uplifting yourself. Because again, if you're not uplifted, the people around you are going to feel it. So group energy. So whether we call it prayer, whether we call it meditation, we are essentially doing the same thing. We are sending out positive vibes and positive intentions to the world. We're expanding our own energy. So this is actually what's happening, whether it's prayer or meditation. You're actually expanding your energy and you're sending it out into the world. So when people come together and do this, um, I'm going to say when people come together in the same time and space, it's yeah. super powerful. But although time and space is really compressed looking at it from the other realm, mm -hmm. but yet I still feel the energy of it when I bring a group of people together. When I actually, I either do it sometimes online or I do it physically. I put a mm -hmm. shout out and I say, hey, I'm going to be here. Who wants to join me mm -hmm. for a group meditation to uplift the planet? And the meditations that I do, tend to start with, let's all start with expanding our own energy. Let's all see, see ourselves as being full and whole and healed and loved. And so we start with that. So we feel good about ourselves and then we expand it outward. Um, I really feel that if more and more people, if more kids learned to do it, if it was part of their morning ritual when they get to school with the whole school does it as a morning, you know, a morning prayer or morning prayer. meditation, um, I think we could change the whole planet. I really do. If you were to call the shots on what some, I don't know, top three, top five changes that would be the most influential to shifting our planet into a new frequency state of consciousness, what would you do? So if it were up to me, I would want everybody to, to change their values. So for example, right now, if you look around the world, cutting edge technology, invention, every form of progression, every form of the way we're evolving, the number one value that it's based on is money. It's mm -hmm. based on money. That, that is behind mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. um, like if you think about medicine, if you think about um, healthcare, the bigger factor is the money and not the individual person's health. Yeah. If you think about education, teachers aren't getting paid as much as they should considering they're molding young people's lives. Like the biggest factor behind every single evolution in, in this, in our current modern world, is money the biggest driving factor so let me put it that way the biggest driving factor is money mm -hmm. if we shifted that and if we made well-being the well-being of humanity the biggest driving factor behind everything we do our reality would change just like that just like that because that was the biggest shift i made in my life was that i made my personal well-being the biggest value of my life. So everything that I did, everything that I um, moved forward doing, it wasn't about, does it bring me more money? Does it, uh, does it, you know, do, is this a good career move? None of those decisions mattered. It was like, what does it do for my well-being? And mm -hmm. once I made that shift, my life just changed moving forward. And I believe that if everything that humanity did was based on the well-being of the people, then it would change dramatically. Mm -hmm. And if I can just expand on that just a little bit, mm -hmm. that we have cutting edge technology that exists, but it's not public knowledge. It's not uh, even cutting edge technology for healing, for healing cancers, but it's not being approved by governments to be used because even though this is technology that exists, it's been done by scientists, it's been researched, but it's not being approved because it will, um, it will actually cause the current paradigm, the big money making machine of pharmaceuticals and the current research and the current technology, it would cause that paradigm to lose money. And so new technology is not released 
at the pace at which it's being developed. It's being released at the pace at which the people who make the money are willing to relinquish. Yeah, or at the pace in which they can find a way to monetize it. Exactly, yes. So it's being released at the pace. I like that. That's a much better way of phrasing it. It's mm -hmm. being released at the pace at which people can find a way to monetize it. But if we put well-being ahead of money, it would be a very different reality. If you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.